speaking. <laughs> Never, your majesty, with greater need for thought than now. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Well, what is it? More trouble? What we might call the old trouble, your majesty. It's what I was saying last night to the queen. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown, was how I put it. A profound and uh, original thought, which may well go down to posterity. You mean it may go down well with posterity? I hope so. Remind me to tell you sometime of another little thing I said to her majesty. Something about a fierce light beating on a throne. <laughs> Posterity would like that too. Well, what is it? It isn't a matter of Her Royal Highness's wedding, Your Majesty. Oh, yes. As Your Majesty is aware, the young Prince Simon arrived today to seek Her Royal Highness's hand in marriage. He has been traveling in distant lands, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, is not to. Uh, is not to. Uh, you mean he hasn't heard anything? Uh, it is a little difficult to put this tactfully, Your Majesty. Do your best, and I will tell you afterwards how you got on. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, the Prince Simon will naturally assume that uh, Her Royal Highness has the, uh, the customary, uh, uh, so customary as to be, in my own poor opinion, slightly uh, monotonous. Uh, uh, as what one might call the uh, inevitable, uh, <laughs> so inevitable as to be, in my own opinion again, almost uh, mechanical. <laughs> uh, we'll assume she has the, uh, as I think of it, uh, faultily faultless, uh, icily regular, splendid. What you are trying to say in the fewest words possible is that my daughter is not beautiful. <laughs> Her beauty is certainly a. Elusive, Your Majesty. It is. It has eluded you. It has eluded me. It has eluded everybody who has seen her. It even eluded the court painter. His last words were, well, I did my best. <laughs> His successor is now painting the view across the water meadows from the west turret. His doctor has advised him to keep to landscape. <laughs> it is unfortunate, Your Majesty. But there it is. One just cannot understand how it can occurred. You don't think she takes after me at all? You don't detect a likeness? Most certainly not, Your Majesty. Good. Your predecessor did. <laughs> I've often what happened. I've often wondered what happened to my predecessor. Now you know. <laughs> Looking at the bright side, although Her Royal Highness is not strictly speaking beautiful. Not truthfully speaking beautiful. Yes, she has great beauty. Character! <laughs> My dear Chancellor, we are not considering Her Royal Highness's character, but her chances of getting married. You observe that there is a distinction. Yes, Your Majesty. Look at it from the suitor's point of view. If a girl is beautiful, it is easy to assume that she has tucked away inside her an equally beautiful character. But it is impossible to assume that an unattractive girl, however elevated in character, has tucked away inside her an equally beautiful face. That is, so to speak, not where you want it. Tucked away. Quite so, Your Majesty. This doesn't, of course, alter the fact that the Princess Camilla is quite the nicest person in the kingdom. She is indeed, Your Majesty. With the exception, I need hardly say, of Your Majesty and Her Majesty. Your exceptions are tolerated for their loyalty and condemned for their extreme fatuity. <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesty. As an adjective for your king, the word nice is ill-chosen. As an adjective for Her Majesty, it is ill-chosen! <laughs> ah, talking about Camilla. As always, my dear, you are right! This fellow, Simon, what's he like? Nobody has seen him, Your Majesty. How old is he? Five and twenty, I understand. In twenty-five years, he must have been seen by somebody! Just a fleeting glimpse! <laughs> uh, what I meant to say, Your Majesty, is that no detailed report of him has reached this country, save that he has the usual qualities and personal advantages expected of a prince, and has been traveling in distant and dangerous lands. <sighs> Nothing gone wrong with his eyes. Something <laughs> or anything. <laughs> uh, not that I'm aware of, Your Majesty. At the same time, 
time, as I was venturing to say to His Majesty, Her Royal Highness's character and disposition are so outstandingly- Stuff and nonsense. You remember what happened when we had the Tournament of Love last year? Well, I was not myself present. I had not then the honor of I was abroad and never heard the full story. No, it was the other fool. They all wrote to Camilla to pay their homage. It was the first time they had seen her. The heralds blew their trumpets and announced that she would marry whichever prince was left master of the field when all but one had been unhorsed. The trumpets were blown again. They charged enthusiastically into the fight and... Do that. I'm sorry, my dear. And what <laughs> happened? They all simultaneously fell off their horses and assumed a posture of defeat. One of them was not quite so quick as the others. I was very quick. I proclaimed him the victor. <laughs> was the that night. We were all very quick. The chancellor <laughs> announced that by the laws of the country, the successful suitor had to pass a further test. He had to give the correct answer to a riddle. Such undoubtedly is the fact for you, Majesty. There are times for announcing facts and times for looking at things in a broad-minded way. Please remember that, Chancellor. Yes, Your Majesty. I invented the riddle myself. Quite an easy one. What is it which has four legs and barks like a dog? The answer is a dog! You see that? Yes, Your Majesty. It isn't difficult. He, however, seemed to find it so. He said an eagle. Then he said a serpent, a very high mountain with slippery sides, two peacocks, a moonlight night, the day after tomorrow. Nobody could accuse him of not trying. I did. I should have said that nobody could fail to recognize in his attitude an appearance of doggedness. <laughs> him on the correct answer. He disappeared under the table, and personally I never saw him again. His body was found in the moat next morning. But what was he doing in the boat, Your Majesty? Bombing about! <laughs> Try not to ask needless questions! <laughs> it all seems so strange. What does? Well, that her royal highness, alone of all the princesses one has ever heard of, should lack that invariable attribute of royalty. Supreme beauty. That was your great aunt Malkin. She came to the christening. You know what she said. It was cryptic. Great aunt Malkin's besetting weakness. She came to my christening and she was 101 then. And that was 51 years ago. How old would that make her? 152, Your Majesty. About that, yes. She promised me that when I grew up, I should have all the happiness which my wife deserved. <laughs> it struck me at the time. Well, when I say at the time, I was only a few weeks old, but it did strike me <laughs> as soon as anything could strike me. I mean, of that nature. But work it out for yourself, Chancellor. It opens up a most interesting field of speculation. Though, naturally, I'd not like to go into it at all deeply, with Her Majesty. I never heard anything less cryptic. She was wishing you extreme happiness. I don't think she was wishing me anything. <laughs> However, uh, uh, but what, uh, Your Majesty? Was she wishing Her Royal Highness? Her other godmother, on my side, had promised her the dazzling beauty for which all the women in my family are famous. Oh, indeed, yes, <laughs> Your Majesty. And great Aunt Malkin said, what were the words? I give you with this kiss a wedding day surprise, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. I thought the last two lines rather neat. But what it meant? We can all see what it meant. She was given beauty. And where is it? Great Aunt Malkin took it away from her. The wedding day surprise is that there will never be a wedding day. Young men being what they are, 
my dear, it would be much more surprising if there were a wedding day. So how do you know, darling? Oh, I say, affairs of state? Sorry. Oh, don't go, Camilla. Shall I withdraw, Your Majesty? You are aware, Camilla, that Prince Simon arrives today. He has arrived. They're just letting down the drawbridge. Arrived! I must go! We know what the drawbridge is like. It takes at least a half an hour to let it down. It wants oil. Have you been grudging at oil? It wants a new drawbridge, darling. Have I your majesty's permission? Yes! Yes. You have told him, of course. It's the only chance. Uh, no, I was just going to when- Then I'd better. You can explain to the girl. I'll have her sent to you. You've told Camilla. Oh, no, I was just going to when- Then you'd better tell her now. My dear, are you sure? It's the only chance. seriously about marriage. Yes, Father. It is time that you learn some of the facts of life. Yes, Father. Now the great fact about marriage is that once you're married, you live happy ever after. <laughs> All our history books affirm this. And your own experience too, darling? Let us confine ourselves to history for the moment. Yes, Father. <laughs> Of course, there may be an exception here and there, which proves the rule just as... Well, never mind. <laughs> Go on, darling. You were going to say that an exception here and there proves the rule that all princesses are beautiful. Well, leave that for the moment. <laughs> the point is that it doesn't matter how you marry or who you marry as long as you get married. Because you'll be happy ever after in any case. Do you follow me so far? Yes, Father. Well, your mother and I have a little plan. Was that it, going out the door just now? Uh, yes, it concerns your waiting maid. Darling, I have several. Only one that leads to the eye, so to speak. The one with the, well, with everything. Dolce Bella? That's the one. It is our plan that at the first meeting she should pass herself off as the princess, a harmless ruse of which you will find frequent record in the history books. And to lure Prince Simon to his, that is to say, bring him up to the... In other words, the wedding will take place immediately afterwards, and quietly in the fact that your great aunt Malkin is 152, and since you'll be wearing the family bridal veil, which is no doubt how the custom arose, the surprise after the ceremony will be his. Are you following me at all? Your attention seems to be wandering. I was wondering why you needed to tell me. Oh, just a precautionary measure, in case you happen to meet the prince or his attendant before the ceremony. In which case, of course, you would pass yourself off as the maid. A harmless ruse of which also you will find frequent record in the history books. Exactly! But the occasion need not arise. The woman, Dolce Bella. Oh, Camilla, if you will just retire to your own apartments, I will come to you there and we are ready for the actual ceremony. Come in, my dear. Oh, no, don't be frightened. There's nothing to be frightened about. <laughs> Has Her Majesty told you what you have to do? Yeah, yes, Your Majesty. Well, now let's see how well you can do it. You are sitting here, we will say. Now imagine that I am Prince Simon. <laughs> <laughs> You are the beautiful Princess Camilla, whom he has never seen. This is a serious moment in your life, and you will find that a giggle will not be helpful. I am announced, His Royal Highness Prince Simon. That's me being announced. Remember what I said about giggling. You should have a faraway look upon the face. Farther away than that. No, that's too far. You are sitting there thinking beautiful thoughts and made in meditation, fancy free, as I remember saying to Her Majesty once, speaking of somebody else, fancy free, but with the mouth definitely shut. That's better. <laughs> I advance and fall upon one knee. You extend your hand graciously. <laughs> graciously. You're not trying to push him in the face. And I raise it to my lips so, and I kiss it. 
<laughs> no, perhaps not so ardently as that. More like this. And then I say, Your Royal Highness, it is the proudest. No, Your Royal Highness, I shall ever be. No, Your Royal Highness. It... Well, the point is that he will say that it will be something complimentary. And then he will take your hand in both of his and press it to his heart. And then what do you say? Coo! No! <laughs> Not coo! Never had anyone do that to me before. That also strikes the wrong note! What you want to say is, oh, Prince Simon! <laughs> say it! Oh, Prince Simon! No! no! <laughs> you don't need to shout and tell he has said what? Two or three times. Always consider the possibility that he isn't deaf. <laughs> Softly, and giving the words a dying fall, letting them play around his head like a flight of doves. Ooh, <laughs> Get the idea in your mind of a flight of doves, rather than a flight of panic-stricken elephants. And you will be all right. Now, I'm going to get up, and you must, as it were, waft me into a seat by your side. Not rescuing a drowning man! Another idea altogether, useful at times, but at the moment inappropriate. <laughs> Wafting. Prince Simon will put the necessary muscles into play. All you require to do is to indicate by a gracious movement of the hand the seat you require him to take. Now, that was better. Well, here we are. Now, I think you give me a look, let us say, something between the breathless adoration of a nun and the voluptuous abandonment of a woman of the world, with an undertone of regal dignity, touched, as it were, with good comradeship. Now, try that. <laughs> Frankly, that didn't quite get it. There was just a little something missing, in absence, as it were, of all the qualities I asked for. <laughs> I did their place an odd resemblance to an unsatisfied fish. <laughs> Let us try to get at it another way. Dolce Bella, have you a young man of your own? Oh, yes! He's ever so smart. He's an archer. Well, not as you might say, a real archer. He works in the armory, but old Bottlenose, you know who I mean, the captain of the guard, says that the very next man that they ever has to shoot my egg shall take his place. <laughs> but knowing father and how he's with me an egg and me being married to a royal highness and can't get married till he's a real soldier, but ever so loving and funny like the things he says. I said to him once, egg, I My rather fancy, Dolce Bella, that if you think of egg all the time, say as little as possible. And when thinking of egg, see that the mouth is not more than partially open. You will do very well. I'm going to show you where you are to sit and wait for his royal highness. Now remember, what, what, not hike! certainly aren't. <laughs> Why are you sitting in the king's throne? And who are you? My name is Carlo. Mine is Dolce Bella. Good. And now can we sit down? You may sit here if you like. Why are you so tired? I've been taking very strenuous exercise. Is that part of the long <laughs> story? It is. I love stories. This isn't a story, really. You see, I'm attendant on Prince Simon, who is visiting here. Oh, I'm attendant on Her Royal Highness. Then you know what he's here for. Yes. She's very beautiful, I hear. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Where are you feeling? 
Traveling in distant lands with Prince Simon. Ah, all the same. I don't understand. Is Prince Simon in the palace yet? The drawbridge can't be down yet. I don't suppose it is. And what a noise it makes coming down. <laughs> Isn't it terrible? I couldn't stand it anymore. I just had to get away, and that's why I'm here. But how? Well, there's only one way, isn't there? That beech tree. And then a swing and a grab for the battlements, and don't ask me to remember it all. You mean you came across the moat by that beech tree? Yes, I got so tired of hanging about. But it's terribly dangerous. That's why I'm so exhausted. Nervous <laughs> shock. <laughs> of course, it's different for me. Say that again. I must have got it wrong. It's different for me because I'm used to it. Besides, I'm so much lighter. You don't mean that you... Oh, yes. Well, I thought I was a brave man. Well, at least I did not till five minutes ago, and now I don't again. Oh, but you are. And I think it's wonderful to do it straight off the first time. Well, you did. Oh, no. Not the first time. When I was a child. You mean that you crashed? Well, you only fall into the moat. Only? Can you swim? Of course. So you swam to the castle walls and yelled for help. And they fished you out and walloped you, and the next day you tried again. Well, if that isn't plucked, then I... Of course I, I didn't. I swam back and did it at once. I mean, I did it again at once. It wasn't until the third time that I actually did it. You see, I was afraid I might lose my nerve. Afraid she might lose her nerve. There's a way of getting over from this side, too. A tree grows up from the wall and you jump into another tree. I don't think it's quite so easy. Not quite so easy. Good. You must show me. Oh, I will. Perhaps it might be as well if you taught me how to swim first. I've often heard of swimming, but never have You can't to... swim? No. D don't look so surprised. There are a lot of things which I can't do. I'll tell you about them as soon as you have a couple of years to spare. You can't swim, and yet you cross the moat by that beech tree? And you're ever so much heavier than I am. Now who's brave? You keep talking about how light you are. I must see if there's anything in it. <laughs> you're right, Dr. Bella. I could hold you here forever. You're very lovely. <laughs> Do you know how lovely you are? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Why did you laugh? Are you tired of holding me? <laughs> Frankly, Yes. <laughs> I exaggerated when I said I could hold you here forever, when you've been hanging by the arms over a very deep moat for ten minutes, wondering if it's too late to learn how to swim. What I meant was that I'd like to hold you here forever, but why did you laugh? <laughs> well, that's a little secret. If it comes to that, I've got a secret too. Shall we exchange them? Mine's very private. Only one other woman in the world knows. Mine's just as private. One other man knows, and that's all. What fun. I love secrets. Well, here's mine. When I was born, my godmother promised that I should be very beautiful. How right she was. But the other one said this. I give you with this kiss a wedding day surprise. Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. And nobody knew what it meant. And I grew up very plain, and then when I was about 10, I met my godmother in the forest one day. It was my 10th birthday. Nobody knows this except you. Except us. Except us. And she told me what her gift meant. It meant that I was beautiful, but everybody was to go on being ignorant and thinking me plain until my wedding day. Because, she said, she didn't want me to grow up spoiled and willful and vain like I should have done it. Everybody had, had always been saying how beautiful I was. And the best thing in the world, she said, was to be very sure of yourself and not to expect admiration from other people. So ever since then, my mirror has told me I'm beautiful. And everybody else thinks me ugly. And I get a lot of fun out of it. Well, seeing that Dolce Bella is the result, I can only say your godmother was very, very wise. And now tell me your secret. It isn't such a pretty one, you see. Prince Simon was going to woo Princess Camilla when he heard that she was beautiful and haughty and imperious. All that you would have been if your godmother hadn't been so wise. And him being a fairly ordinary looking fellow himself, 
he was afraid she wouldn't think much of him. So he suggested to one of his attendants, a man named Carlo, of extremely attractive appearance, <laughs> that he should take his place and win the princess's hand. And then, well, at the last moment, they would change places. How would they do that? The prince was going to be married in full armor, with his visor down. <laughs> oh, what fun. Neat, isn't it? Oh, very, very, very. Neat, but not so terribly funny. Why do you keep laughing? Well, that's another secret. If it comes to that, I've got another one up my sleeve. Shall we exchange again? OK, you go first this time. Very well. I am not Carlo. I am Prince Simon. What is it? Uh, cramp. I was saying that I was Prince Simon. Should I rub it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Simon. Is that better? I am Simon. I know! But how did you know? Well, you told me. But oughtn't you to swoon or something? Why? History records many similar ruses. Is that so? I've never read history. I thought I was being profoundly original. Oh, no. Now I'll tell you my secret. For reasons very much like your own, the princess feared to meet Prince Simon. Is the drawbridge down yet? Do your people give a faint surprise cheer every time it lets down? Naturally. Then it came down about three minutes ago. Ah, then at this very moment, your man Carlo is declaring his passionate love for my maid, Dolce Bella. <laughs> that, I think, is funny. Dolce Bella, by the way, is in love with the man she calls Egg. So I hope Carlo isn't getting too carried away. Carlo is married to a girl he calls the little woman. So <laughs>